accidentally deleted my intro and outro. So just popping in here to say hello. I'm sure you know what a favorites and fails video is, so I don't have to explain that. But if you're new here and you don't know who I am, my name's Kate. I have a corporate job, so I like products that are super easy to use, that practically do the work for me. I have more of a minimal approach to beauty. I like having a smaller collection for a content creator. And in terms of my reviews, I like to be critical, detailed, and brutally honest. So if that sounds like your thing, I hope you'll subscribe. And now let's get into my current favorites and fails. I'm gonna start with fails first because it's just fresh on my mind. I tried a bunch of perfumes this week that just were trash. They were trash. Starting with Jo Malone Ginger Biscuit. When I first saw this on Sephora, I was so excited because the thought of smelling like a ginger cookie sound amazing. And then I smelled it this week and it is just, it's nothing. So Ginger Biscuit does not smell like ginger biscuits at all. It smells powdery and like florals. I just feel so gaslit and I'm in the middle of filming my huge vanilla perfume deep dive. I've got all the perfumes over there. I'm filming it tomorrow. Like it's ready to go. I'm stoked. And after trying like 60 fragrances for that video, I just feel so gaslighted by the perfume industry. I feel like these companies take one fragrance note that's barely in the perfume, slap that as the name and expect us to think it smells like that. And it's just, it's very misleading. Like I want this to smell like ginger biscuits. If it has a name like ginger biscuits, it better smell like ginger biscuits. Mm -mm. It's a little floral. There's like a hint of ginger in there maybe, but it's powdery. Mm -mm. Yeah. Didn't like it. If you've been wanting this, save your money. It's just like generic and disappointing. Speaking of generic and disappointing, Tom Ford Vanilla Sex, trash. Ugh, I'm so annoyed at this one. Okay, a name like Vanilla Sex, you know that you're gonna get a good amount of vanilla. And then when I hear the name sex in fragrance, I think of like animalistic notes or musk or something, you know, really like skin-like and kind of sexy, maybe like ambergris a little bit. Mm -mm, mm -mm, not with Tom Ford Vanilla Sex. And you would think that Tom Ford would know how to do a sexy perfume, right? I mean, there are so many amazing Tom Ford fragrances out there. This just smells like almonds, just almonds just like you dabbed some almond extract on your body and went about your day. That's what Tom Ford's marketing is vanilla sex, travesty. The Tom Ford website says vanilla, one of the most sought after ingredients in modern perfumery, assumes a role that is anything but ordinary in vanilla sex eau de parfum fragrance. Keynotes, vanilla tincture India, vanilla absolute sandalwood essence. I just don't understand how Tom Ford can launch a fragrance that's anything but ordinary and then launch a fragrance that just has vanilla and sandalwood. Like that's the most ordinary thing I've ever heard. Addictive by nature, glamorous by design, a captivating interplay play of deep and bright vanilla notes star in vanilla sex. <laughs> this is so cheesy. An unforgettable experience. This fragrance is an icon of sensual pleasure that is far from innocent. Like who the fuck writes this? Oh my God. They were like, how many sex words can we fit into this description? Sensual, pleasure, interplay, deep, uh, sex, innocence. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, Tom Ford, you disappointed me. You disappointed me a lot. With a name like Vanilla Sex, I was expecting something extraordinary, but I got almond extract. So moving on. Seriously, speaking of generic and disappointing, Ellis Brooklyn Apple Love. Oh, I don't know. It just smells like very juicy couture to me or like Viva La Juicy. There's barely an apple note in here. It's a super generic fruity floral. It's sharply sweet on the nose. It's just nothing special and not interesting and not worth your money at all. It also fades after like five minutes. So she gone. Okay. I have one more perfume fail. Also, what do you think of my shirt? Isn't it cool? It's like a sequin, like motocross shirt. So alongside Tom Ford Vanilla Sex, I delayed my vanilla perfume deep dive. So I get my hands on these babies. These are samples of the 2023 Zara Vanilla Perfume Collection. I believe there were four launched. At least I hope I got my hands on all of them and they're disgusting. I hate them. So let's start with Vanilla Vibration. So this is on sale, 30 milliliters for $9.99 right now, but usually it's $17. 90 cents. The notes are cardamom, violet, iris, orange blossom, and vanilla. This is so weird. Oh, I don't want it again. Oh, that's so bizarre. It opens with a menthol pickle note. Huh. You gotta try it. Trust me, now that you hear me say menthol pickle, you will totally get it. Oh, it's really like causes a reaction, you know? So someone else on Fragrantica said that it smelled like menthol and pickles. But then after that, it kind of dries down and starts settling into something that smells really musty, kind of like an old attic. And then eventually I smell pure cardamom. It's just like a cool spice bomb. And a lot of people on Fragrantica said they smelled deodorant in a parking garage. Some other people said an attic, a library, something musty, and then all this cardamom. I, like, where do you get the name Vanilla Vibration from? There is absolutely no vanilla in any of these. Then there's this bitch. This is hypnotic vanilla, which is supposed to be a fruity floral. And the notes are apricot blossom, jasmine, bourbon vanilla, moss, and dulce de leche. Um, this smells like flowers and Play-Doh to me. Again, 
There is really no vanilla in here. I could not smell the caramel and a bunch of other people on Fragrantica couldn't either. I'm just so confused how they are getting away with calling this hypnotic vanilla. It's basically all jasmine and I don't like jasmine, so I'm disappointed. Then I got Starlight Vanilla, also on sale for $9.99. And the notes are lavender, almond milk, vanilla foam, and amber. This smells like lavender toilet spray. So gross. The absolute opposite of what I want in something called Starlight Vanilla. It's so powdery and honestly, it smells like poopy diaper. Once you smell it, you can't unsmell it. It smells like powdery poopy diaper. It's so bad. Now, Supreme Vanilla, we're getting like a little bit closer here, a little bit closer, but not really because the notes are Tonka Bean, Cedarwood, Madagascar Vanilla, and Pink Sugar with a Tinted Accord. Don't know what that means. Oh, Tinted Accord is actually an inky note. Okay, so this is the one that smells to me like Pink Sugar plus an attic. There's something very dusty about it. And this was actually the scent where someone called it Sugar plus an underground parking garage, not the last one. Okay, someone said it smells like vanilla and mothballs. Someone else said it smells exactly like Kaoli 28. And then someone else said it's very headache inducing and smells like warm vanilla sugar by Bath and Body Works. Yeah, again, this one's just like super sweet. It's kind of astringent on the nose because it's so sweet. And then something a little bit dusty musty in there. I just, it's not my fave. So gonna pass this on. Oh, okay. I have two candles. One's a fail and one's a favorites. And the first hotel lobby candle that I really didn't like is Aspen. And it's sold out right now, but I got it when it first dropped. And I, first of all, I loved that deep kind of bluish green matte container. Oh, I love that color. And the website says, created in collaboration with the historic Hotel Jerome, the scent of Aspen takes you on a journey to the mountain town's most luxurious lobby. Vintage cedarwood, tooled leather, and golden embers rest on a smoky base alongside cooling notes of snow-capped pine. It's cozy, rustic, and rich fragrance that blends aspen old, blah, blah, okay, who cares, whatever. Um, the notes are vintage cedar wood, smoke, snow-capped pine, tooled leather, and golden embers. This smelled so bad. It was so leathery. All I could smell is leather. And I always find in fragrances, when leather is a prominent note, it just makes me really nauseous. It gives me a headache. Something about it just makes me feel really sick. And I really couldn't smell any of the other notes, so I passed that one on to subscriber. Some of you are going to be so bummed by this next fail because a lot of you recommended it to me. This is the Lancome blush in Miel Glacé and it's just a shade issue thing. So on my skin, it, it's basically the color of my skin. It's super sheer. There's barely any base pigment to it. It's barely even shimmers because you can't see the particles, but it is a shimmer finish and it's so sheer. It's basically the color of my skin. So all you get is a highlighter effect on the cheeks. And for me, that is not what I'm looking for in a nude blush. So unfortunately, this one didn't work out for me. I'm sure it would be better if you have skin that's really fair. Mine is somewhere between fair and light. Oh, oh my God, I have the worst blush. I don't know what's up, but so many of you recommended <laughs> the Revlon blush and Naughty Nude to me. This is horrible. This is truly one of the worst blushes I've ever tried. First of all, the color is way too yellow for me. It makes me look like I'm about to shit my pants. Like it is the most disgusting color I've ever seen on my complexion. And then when I apply it, I get a little bit of that really yellowy beige and then just pure shimmer. And it just, it emphasized all of the texture on my skin. Like when I use a matte blush and a matte powder, I can cover the texture on my skin pretty well. But when you have something like this that is just so shimmery and just highlights every flaw and pore on your face, oh man, it, it really does numbers on uh, on your confidence. When I was editing the B-roll footage of this, like the close-up of the texture shot, I was just horrified. I was like, do I really look like that? Shit. But I will say the blush from Revlon and Rosie Rendezvous is on my favorites list. So stay tuned for that one. It is a great formula, it's just this one was was like super shimmery and the rosy rendezvous one was totally different i think i had another blush Ooh, yeah same thing with this covergirl cheekers blush this is in the shade brick rose this was a weird one when i was applying it for the b-roll clips i was building it up and i couldn't see any color on my cheeks but i noticed there was a ton of shimmer and then when i was editing the b-roll footage it looked like quite a lot of color on my cheeks so i don't know why i had trouble seeing that in person and why you can see it on camera but it is definitely a brick kind of color it's like a burnt terracotta red i just found that this is so hard Hard pressed. It's really difficult to pick up any product. And it was just one of those blushes, again, that is way too shimmery. Stay tuned for my nude blush deep dive video. I'm filming it tomorrow. There are so many good blushes at the drugstore. So I hope you guys are going to be excited for that one. I have two more blush fails from that nude blush deep dive video. Don't worry, there are a ton of other fails. I just wanted to pick like the worst of the worst for this video. Ulta Beauty Mineral Blush and Tiger Lily. Terrible. So this color doesn't show up on my skin at all. And maybe it would be great for you if you're more fair than I am. And then it might just be a really nice kind of my skin, but better flush of color. But on me, this just ends up looking like
like silver highlighter. It emphasizes texture on my skin so badly. It's really hard pressed. It's just, it's a really bad blush. And I, I haven't heard anyone talk about it and I think I understand why. And the last one is the L'Oreal True Match Blush in Tender Rose. Oh my God, I thought this was gonna be the perfect color. It's just this cool light pinky mauve. So I could barely get any product on the brush. This is so hard pressed and it's a very light color. It's super sheer. So it's again, one of those colors that took like 10 layers to build up. And by that time I was just left with so much silver shimmer on my cheeks. That was super unflattering on my skin texture. So I learned from this nude blush deep dive video. I don't like shimmery powder blushes. I just want them all to have a matte finish. And I like being able to just add a little bit of highlighter wherever I want. I don't want it all over my face because I do tend to put blush like all over the cheek and I'm just always in a rush. So I have to be careful with where I put it because I don't wanna be putting shimmery stuff all around my face. I own so many shimmery blushes now. I'm, I don't know what to do with myself. Moving on to favorites. Some of you told me to get the Hanalei Lip Treatment in Clear and people had recommended it to me for quite a long time. But honestly, I was researching so many different lip balms for my lip balm deep dive video. And if you haven't seen that, I'll put it on the screen above. I honestly was just like exhausted adding more products to the list, but someone recently commented on that video saying, I can't believe you didn't review the Hanalei lip treatment. It's exactly like the Bite Agave lip mask. And I was like, what? Nobody said that? And I looked it up and it has agave, lanolin, and beeswax, which were like the three primary ingredients that made the original Bite Agave lip mask so fire. And I got this and I think it's like $11 or $15 on Amazon for three of these little mini ones. I don't know. I didn't know I was buying a trio, but it just came and they were small and there was three of them. And I don't know, it is phenomenal. It's not sticky like the Bite Agave lip mask, unfortunately. I so loved the stickiness of that mask. Oh my God, it was so comforting and it just like lasted forever. But this is really thick. And then because it's more buttery, it does like melt on the lips a little bit, but it has that kind of agave scent that I love. And it has the lanolin and the beeswax. And I find that those are the ingredients that make the product really effective for my lips and so conditioning. So if you've been looking for a dupe for the Bite Agave lip mask, this is the closest I've found. And I did just order the Lano overnight something or other mask. It's similar. It also has lanolin, beeswax, and then vanilla. So a bunch of people have been telling me that I had to pick it up and it's been out of stock at Ulta, but it didn't matter because I couldn't get my hands on it anyways. So I ordered it from Urban Decay and the shipping was kind of long, but whatever. So I will keep you posted on that. And in the meantime, this one is fantastic. So Prequel, great brand by Dr. Samantha Ellis, came out with a Lucent C brightening vitamin C serum, 15% L-ascorbic acid, frulic acid, and ergothionine. Ergothionine. I know people get so upset when influencers don't know how to pronounce things. I'm not here to be a skincare expert, but what I do know is that my skin's very sensitive to vitamin C serums, even vitamin C derivatives, and just antioxidant serums in general. My skin just always seems to have a little bit of reactivity to that. This is really the first vitamin C serum that has not irritated my skin. And I haven't tried it when my skin's really flared, but usually a vitamin C serum would irritate my skin over time, and this one hasn't. I would say it's probably better if you have dry or dehydrated skin, because it does have a little bit of a dewy finish to it. It. Maybe not as much dewy as, you know, that kind of classic vitamin C serum feeling. It's kind of sticky, like a little bit oily almost. It does have that quality to it, but I have combination skin and my skin gets a little bit oily when I wear makeup. And I find that I can still wear this underneath. So I've been really excited. Prequel is awesome because they've been putting out products that are safe for eczema prone skin, fragrance and essential oil free products. Their products come in huge value sizes for a really low price point. Totally the kind of brand that I want to see launch. And I do feel like that's doing something that we haven't seen before, focusing on on simple but effective products and great value and transparency. So I really like when dermatologists launch brands and I'm excited about this. I mean, the fact that it doesn't irritate my skin is huge. Oh, this next one. I found two of my favorite brushes ever. We have the BK and Angela or Angie Hot and Flashy A506 Concealer Brush. I bought this recently and the It Cosmetics for Ulta number 113 brush. Let's start with the concealer brush. This perfectly fits under the eyes and I'll I'll show you in the close-up clip. It's just the perfect shape to get under your eyes. It's not too big, but it's not too small. It's the perfect shape to just kind of contour the shape of the under eyes. It truly is a phenomenal brush. I've never tried BK Beauty before, but now that I see how great this performs and how truly like I want to reach for this brush, I wanna try more of their brushes. I'm really excited. I'm so glad I finally bought this. I've been considering it for a long time and yeah, it's awesome. Oh, by the way, tell me if you've tried the Kylie Cosmetics concealer brush. You know, the one that's like a pink triangle. I'm interested in that, but let me know if it's if it's worth picking up. The other brush I got was the It Cosmetics brush for Ulta number 113. This was normally $28 and I think it was on sale recently for a lot less. I went and I actually bought 
about this in stores, this changed my blush game. As I've been testing so many freaking blushes for that nude blush video, I've been using a lot of my blush brushes. And one thing I found is, wow, it really makes a difference what brush you use. This changed everything for me and I wish I had discovered it before I started filming that video. This is not super dense. It is like a little bit sparse and pretty fluffy. So it works great with products that are really pigmented, but it also works great with products that are really sheer because there are a lot of hairs in the brush. It's super soft and it's the perfect size and shape for the cheeks. I can see why so many people love this brush. I can't believe it took me this long to pick it up. So a candle that I do love is the new Savant Library in a Forest. And you don't hear me talk a lot about the new Savant on my channel because even though some of their candles are like my favorite scents ever, the throw in the new Savant candles is so strong that it honestly just fills up my entire house and it gives us all a headache. John has actually specifically asked me to not burn their candles in the house because it's just way too overpowering for him. But if you like candles with a strong throw and you want to get good bang for your buck, you'd love them. But I'm really excited because Library in a Forest is not only a smell that is just so me and so comforting and so wintry, but it's not as strong of a throw as the others. I would say this is like light medium and it just smells like winter time to me. So the notes are pine needles, crisp book pages, spruce bark, leather, and red cedar. Oh, it's just so cozy and comforting and cool. I absolutely love it. I cannot get enough of this. So this now is by far my favorite candle from the new Savant. Ooh, I have a good one. Okay, I've been living under a rock and I finally picked up the NYX lip liner in mauve. I tried that lip liner like years and years and years ago before I ever had a YouTube channel. And I just remember not liking the formula and I tried it again because I think, who was talking about it in their celebrity makeup bag? Yeah, okay, I think it was Shailene Woodley, someone like that. She was talking about how she always has a NYX lip liner and I'm pretty sure she said the shade mauve or it was like linked below. I tried this and it is the perfect color that I've been looking for in a lip liner. So let me see if I can take my tint off because I do need a little bit of a topper. I know you can't really see me because it's nighttime and I don't know how to light my videos, but this formula is a little on the waxy side for me. Not as waxy as Charlotte Tilbury. Honestly, it feels a lot like the Victoria Beckham lip liners, but this feels waxier, like a little stickier. So I like lip liners that have a little bit of creaminess to them. So they're just like easy to slide on, but waxy ones are definitely a little more long lasting. So it's okay. So that is mauve and it's such a good color. So many lip liners always end up pulling really warm and really peachy on me. This is honestly one of the only ones that doesn't along with Sephora's Sinker Suede and the Nudist, but neither of those colors really work for me as I've kind of gotten to know them. This is my perfect lip liner. I just wish it were in the Tower 28 one liner formula or the Fit Glow Vegan lip liner formula. Those are my two favorite formulas, but this is my favorite color. Ooh, I'm gonna go back to what I was wearing. So on top of the NYX liner and mauve, what I've been wearing in this video is the Wake Make Dewy Gel Glow Tint in Fig Filling. I got this on Yes Style. It's a K-Beauty tint. It smells like apples, which is really nice. It has a really comfortable applicator and it's just like the name suggests, a gel tint. It slightly stains the lips, but this color doesn't stain them very much. I am just so in love with this particular shade. It's it's like a rosy mauvey brown. It is the perfect my lips but better color. There's a little pink, there's a little mauve, it's muted, there's a little brown in it. So that was what I was wearing in the video. It doesn't last very long, so you can see throughout this video this is totally worn off, but it's very affordable and it's a gorgeous shade. The other one I've been totally loving is the 3CE Blur Water Tint in Double Wind. So this is like a lip stain, but instead of a glossy finish, it has a matte finish. And this color Double Wind is so beautiful. It's honestly like a mauve berry, again, with a little bit of brown. It's like, it's just the perfect color. It's a little bit deeper and maybe like a hair more red. I absolutely love this color. It's similar to the one I just wore in Fig Filling, but I think this is a little bit deeper and more berry. And it's so comfortable for a matte lip stain. It feels a little creamy and powdery on the lips and they smell like cake, which is amazing. Mm, it's so nice. And last one for lips, is the Roman Blur Fudge Tints. These are incredible. These are a more standard like velvety, creamy, powdery lip cream, but they blur the lips like nothing I've ever tried. It looks like velvet fabric on your lips. It is so beautifully blurring, but it's creamy and powdery and balmy and it feels very comfortable. My only issue with these is that they don't come in more shades and the rest of the shades are really, really bright and mostly bright pinks. And so I wanted some neutrals and some nudes, but unfortunately I feel like a lot of the K-beauty brands really like to focus on bright colors, but 
Mauvish and Rosiential are absolutely stunning. And these also smell like cake, which is delicious. I just, I hope that they launch a nude collection because I would go crazy for it. M Cosmetics is launching a new pressed powder. This is portrait mode. It's their refining setting powder. And I have, I guess the color sheer. First of all, I'm not a packaging person. It doesn't really make or break my experience necessarily, but I just love the checkerboard. So when you open it up, you get a little powder puff that you can touch up throughout the day. It's a really soft powder. It doesn't emphasize texture and it's not super matte. So if you need something that's really gonna mattify your skin, I mean, you know, go for like a loose powder if you want something. I think you can see from that demo, this really just blurs the skin and kind of takes away a little bit of that shine. I think there's some radiance particles in here that are so fine, you can't see them as actual shimmer particles, but there's just a little bit of a glow that it gives to the skin while it's also blurring the skin. Absolutely beautiful. So I use this basically, once I've done my foundation and concealer, if I know that I wanna go in with a powder blush and bronzer for that day, then I like to use a setting powder first. And I don't want anything too heavy, so I like going in with a pressed powder to do that. And then when I'm done with my makeup, in any areas that get really oily throughout the day, like around my nose, my chin, and then right between my brows, that's where I go in with like a heavy duty loose powder. And this is perfect for really making sure that I have a perfectly smooth base to apply powders on top. Ooh, okay, I fell in love with a perfume that I found through my vanilla perfume deep dive. And I think a lot of you are really gonna like it. It's the Guerlain Aqua Allegoria Forte Bosca Vanilla. So it's 125 ml for 175 or 75 ml for 130. And the notes are bergamot and eucalyptus, solar and immortel, vanilla absolute, driftwood and musk. So I think online it says that this is a woody vanilla fragrance, but I would almost call it like a marine kind of fragrance. To me, it smells like salty ocean air, like driftwood and vanilla. And when you first spray it, you get this really clean, bright, fresh burst of citrus and eucalyptus. So it's like really fresh, citrusy. And then as it dries over time, you get the base notes of the driftwood and the vanilla. And it just, it also has some like salty accord, I think. It just smells really nice. I think it's probably a great unisex fragrance. Love, 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 love that one. If you've tried that, let me know what you think because I don't think anyone recommended it to me and wow, it's amazing. I have been hardcore loving the Moira Lucent Cream Shadow in Orion. This is my perfect eyeshadow shade. And if you know of this color in a powder formula, please let me know because it looks like such a basic bronze, but it really is my perfect bronze. Some bronzes are too cool toned. Some are too green. Some are a little bit too light and they don't add enough definition. Some bronzes are a little bit too orangey or too yellow. This is perfect. It's my perfect bronze. And it also has all these silver sparkles on top. So the shine is just phenomenal. Like it's truly one of the most beautiful eyeshadows I've ever tried. The only issue with it is that it creases and fades so quickly. So I'm desperate to find this in a powder formula that's more long lasting, but just for the color and the finish alone, I can't stop reaching for it. And I'm gonna run out of it soon and I've had it for less than a year, which is amazing. So the blush I'm wearing on my cheeks today is the MAC Sheer Tone Blush in Blush Baby. And this is definitely one of my favorites from my nude blush video. It's a beautiful flush of a muted plummy pink and it warms up a little bit once it's on my cheeks, but it's just gorgeous. I feel like it goes with everything because I have cool toned skin. It is a hard pressed formula. I know sometimes MAC blushes are a little tricky to work with, but I'd rather have that and have to build something up than have something be like super, super chalky and overly pigmented. So I just, I really like this color. One I talked about in my November favorites, Revlon Rosy Rendezvous. I hate what they did by putting stickers all over the packaging. Now it's like sticky and disgusting, but I love the color inside. It looks so incredibly boring, just like a very light, very muted mauve. Like it really is quite cool toned in the pan. And then once it's on the skin, it warms up to a little bit more of a plummy pink with silver shimmer. And it's not nearly as shimmery as the shade Nearly Nude. And there's a little bit of warmth to it from the pink, but then there's also this cool toned quality to it. So it's a little bit contoury as well. It's a great formula. It's not too hard pressed, but it's not chalky at all. It's not overly pigmented. I posted about this on Instagram and a ton of people said that they bought it and loved it. I could not find this on Ulta. I think you can only get it on the Revlon website, in CVS stores, and maybe Walmart. Okay, <laughs> the rest of these are all blushes from that video. Another one I fell in love with, Flower Beauty Sweet Pea. Such a good formula and color. This one is a bit lighter than all the others. It's softer. It's a little bit more of a skin-like shade on me, and it's a bit more cool toned. This has much more of a dusty formula than the other products, but it's so sheer or light in color on me that I don't have to worry about that. It is super silky and smooth. It doesn't go on patchy at all, and I feel like it has an airbrushed finish to the cheeks. So flower beauty, all right. And the blush I think is probably tied for number one best blush in that video is Lawless Vintage Love. It's so good. Right now as I'm looking at it, it looks a little bit warmer on camera, but 
but it is a perfectly lummy pink, but there's also somehow warmth to it. I don't know how it can look cool toned and warm toned at the same time, but I feel like it's such a great romantic shade. I just love wearing this with like a flush of pink across the lips. It makes me feel really fresh, really romantic, really youthful, just like those pops of kind of berry pinks. I feel like really look like, oh, this is weird, alive skin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this makes you look alive. Another blush that makes you look alive is Clinique Heather Pop. I was sick of paying full price for all my blushes. So I got this on eBay and did not see that it was like an in-store tester size, but it's fine. Honestly, I'm not mad about it. I like small products. They fit in bags better. And I think this was like probably $11. So I came out on top, but this is really pretty. I like this formula. It's soft. It's more of like a hard pressed one, but it's not difficult to pick up any product. This is more of like a pink shade. All the others have been kind of a plummy pink. So this one definitely looks like more of a pop of pink on the cheeks and it's sheer, but it's buildable. It has this beautiful, very subtle radiance to it. Yeah, I can't believe it took me this long to try the Clinique Cheek Pop blushes because this formula is beautiful. <gasps> is that it? Did we do it? Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, I'll leave my 2023 makeup favorites video on the screen above. It's an hour long, chock full of product shots, swatches, and application footage. And hopefully you find it relaxing or informative. And if you want to support the channel, you can subscribe, click the like button, leave a comment, or share this with a friend. And wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.